Hey guys, welcome to the live stream. It's a bit of an unusual week because I don't typically live stream this much in a week, but here we are. So if you are jumping in here live right now, welcome. Leave a comment. Let me know that you're here, where you're coming from, what you're smelling like. I know that always sounds weird, but don't take it weird because we're talking about fragrances. If you are watching this after the fact, welcome. Hope you enjoy what you see. This is going to be as brief as I can make it. But for the time being, we are live. And I want to welcome those of you to the live stream. Cam, how's it going? Good to see you. Once again, if you're just filing in, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know that you're here. While you're leaving that comment, maybe leave a like if you like this type of content. Costs you nothing. And uh, let me know where you're coming from. And if you got a fragrance sprayed on today, what is it? Oscar, welcome. M. Junaire, really appreciate that, man. Thank you. Sarah, welcome to the live stream. Good to see you. Davis from Nairobi. Thank you for being here. Light blue forever. I still need to try that one. I hear it's a nice uh, grapefruit fragrance. Saivilis. I don't know if I'm saying that right at all. I apologize. Doron. Good to see you. Itkoi. That's a funny little name. Itkoi. What's up? Alexander. Oh, no taking skills. What's up, man? Good to see you. Thanks for jumping in. Mudar. <laughs> what it do? How's it going, man? Thanks for being here. Christopher, afternoon to you. Sarah, what is that? Trajon? Trajon? Who makes that? I have not, never heard of that fragrance. John from Seattle. Just up the road. Dakobi wearing Spice Bomb Night Vision. Man, I don't know where you're at in the country, but it is way too hot for that here right now. At least for, for the time being, it's going to go down, which I cannot wait for. Scent of the day, wear stone. What is that? Whetstone? Maybe is that what you meant? David, always good to see you from Greece. Wearing ombre leather. Alex from Ukraine. Thanks for being here, Alex. He already ordered Elysium Intense. All right. Looks like I lost you guys there for a second. Um, let me know that everything looks okay. My Wi-Fi signal got weird. It's so ironic because I typically do my live streams in another room and I never have problem with the signal. I'm literally right next to the router and I'm having signal problems. Hopefully that does not persist. So if you're new to a live stream, because we had one person last time on Saturday who was new and who didn't know how this normally goes. For the first 10 minutes or so, I'm going to just be talking with you guys, taking questions, you know, addressing concerns or just other comments. And um, after that, we'll get into business. Whetstone, second soul. <laughs> yeah, man. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy it. Gladiator, all right. Fragrance enjoyers here. So I still need to try Torino. I've almost blind bought it a couple times. I might get a sample. I might be wise and take my own advice and just get a sample. But I hear a lot of good things about it, but I also hear that it's maybe not all that special for the price, but I'll check it out. Uh, let's see. Apex. Okay. He's wearing Elysium O Intense. Need more wearings to get the better grasp. But yeah, I felt the same way on Saturday when I did my live unboxing and first impressions. If you did not watch that, then you are going to be missing quite a bit in this stream because I'm going to build off of those initial thoughts. If you don't care, then you don't care. But if you did miss that, Make sure you go back and check that out. Chicago, what's up? 
Wait, what is this? Torino 21, deaf, blind, by, worthy, not 21. Doran, what do you mean by not 21? The rest of that sentence, I understand. <laughs> oh, not 22. Okay, got it. I've heard good things about that new um, Mikalef fragrance. The gin and tonic, whatever it is, it looks good. Am I going to sample Supernova? Maybe. I don't even think I've heard of that until today. And maybe I have heard the name, but I don't know anything about it. I'll need to look into it. Oh, you're going to like that. Nice, man. Not only is it going to match your name, but it will help you through those hot summers. That's the perfect fragrance for that. Sport, sport, cologne, sport. Yes, I know that's a crazy title for that fragrance. And that's some really fresh citrusy stuff. Yeah, I need to try it. All right, all right. 109 of you guys here. Thanks for hanging out. Greg, good to see you. I smelled a, a sample of Atlas a couple years ago. I might even have it still somewhere. I remember liking it, um, but I uh, I don't think it was a special enough to get a bottle or anything like that. I can't find 3 a.m. anymore. I wonder why. I can't say I'll take sole responsibility for that, but I will take a good portion of it because, again, I'm not the only one talking about 3 a.m., but I know I was kind of on the cusp of the hype. So I do apologize for what happened to those prices. 100 degrees this week, what do you recommend? Well, Peter, it depends on what you have. Um, I don't know what you have in your collection. If I was had to, if I had to go out in 100 degree weather, um, I might wear Hermes, Hermes, Eau Gervre. I might even wear what we're talking about today, maybe. We'll talk about it. Yes. Also, uh, Zerjoff Renaissance. Love that for hot days as well. Have I tried Killian on the Rocks? I have. Uh, love that avatar, by the way. VC. Um, yeah. I had a, I've sampled it several times. I like it. It smells a little bit too basic for me, especially for the price, but I do like it. And um, the perfumer, Sidonie Lonsacere, I really love her work in general. So because of that, it has a slightly more special place in my heart because I love what she does with fresh fragrances, especially. Makes them very, very fresh. I, I love Roger, but can't decide my number one. Tend to reach for Enigma, Danger, or Apex. Those are all the heavy ones. You must not have a whole lot of heat where you are. Those are all great, though. And it's okay if you can't decide your favorite one. You don't need one favorite. Wear all of the ones that you love. It smells like Percival. Alex, what smells like Percival? I'm curious. Shonuf is saying they're obsessed with the new Raja Rhubarb Notes. Amazing love the performance. Not redundant. Okay. Thoughtful thoughts there. Hey, Tyler. Still need to travel to Sweden. I'd love to see that country someday. Got another minute and change here before we get started. Taif Oud is nice. I kind of like it, but you got to sample it. Yes, I agree. Definitely sample it. I think it's a beautifully elegant fragrance. Totally unisex, um, but do not blind buy. Sample for sure. Based in UK North. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Um, I've been, I, I wouldn't say this is far east, but I have been as far north as Newcastle in England. Um, I'm, I'm not assuming you're in England. You could be in Scotland or wherever you are, but I understand what you mean. <laughs> doesn't really get terribly hot unless something's wrong. I still need to try Starlight. In fact, when I did my cardamom video... A lot of you guys recommended I try that. So I added it to my list of fragrances to try. Uh, here it's a great cardamom scent. Jared Miller. Always coming in with the important info. Really appreciate that, Jared. And yeah, guys, the like button is literally inches from you. You might as well just hit it. Because I, I mean, 
yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> if you want to help out the content, that's a great way to do it. Okay, we're 10 minutes in. Let's get started. So topic of today's video, as you already know, is this little guy, brand new, Elysium Intense Roger Parfum, their newest release, their new baby. And I did my first impressions on Saturday. I wore it on Saturday. I wore it on Sunday. And I basically wore it twice yesterday on Monday. So I've gotten some good wearings out of this fragrance. I've gotten a chance to get to know it with a full wearing, which is way more important than spreading it on your hand and smelling it up close. And just to keep things succinct, I took some notes because I don't want to sit here and blab for 45 minutes to an hour. This is not going to take that long. It doesn't have to be that serious. <laughs> so I got my thoughts here. And so I'll be doing some reading. You, you'll see me looking down at my iPad just to make sure that I'm not going off course. So if you guys are interested to know my final thoughts of Elysium O Intense, and obviously my thoughts could continue to evolve. Final thoughts is just a term I'm using. But if you want to know what I've gathered, then I'm, I'm going to tell you now. Okay. So Elysium O Intense. Now, I'm assuming that most of you watching this are already familiar with the original Elysium. Maybe you have it. Maybe you've sampled it. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you love it. doesn't matter. Either way, I'm sure a lot of you guys have tried it. So that is a point of reference here. So overall, the O Intense is a little bit more dense than the original Parfum Cologne. The Parfum Cologne, which is the only one I've tried other than... Um, well, I have not tried the Parfum version, and I understand that's probably a little bit more dense, but Parfum Cologne's pretty transparent, pretty airy smelling, not a whole lot of density to that. This has some density to it, and in my live stream, when I first sprayed this a couple days ago, I found it to not be as icy, cooling, fresh as I was expecting, at least up close, up close on my skin, all the, <clears throat> excuse me. All the base notes were kind of overtaking the freshness, but that was up close. Again, that's not real. When I sprayed it in the air, when I let it come to me, I found it to be quite cooling and icy as I was expecting and as you might expect from the way it looks. And that's what they were going for. OK, and I think the juniper berry really attributes to the cooling, icy freshness uh, that's here. It's pretty sharp. Um, now it was funny. I've most of the time I've been wearing this fragrance over the past couple of days, I've been wearing it around grace. So it's been great to get her feedback because she has some very poignant observations and some ones I never thought about. One thing she said in the car may have been just yesterday when I, I just sprayed it on. It had been maybe 10 minutes since I had sprayed it on. She said it smelled a bit like an aquatic fougere which I've never heard that term before. I thought that was super interesting. Have you guys ever heard that term before? Aquatic fougere. You never really see those two classifications together. Um, and I had to agree with her. I thought about it for a second. I was smelling it. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it is kind of that. Here's why. In the air, as it starts to sit, there is this subtle marine-like saltiness kind of floating around. I don't think there's any explicit notes of aquatic nature in the fragrance, but it does have that vibe. And um, that is blended with, again, this fragrance is a little bit more dense. So there is this kind of creamy, fresh, dense core to the fragrance um, that could be attributed to some of the florals with the juniper berry, whatever it is, it is fresh, but it's also kind of smooth and creamy in a way. It's not quite so airy like the OG here. And I think that combination, along with the woody base that it has, kind of makes it, yeah, smell a little bit like a fougere with this modern aquatic shell, so to speak. Not That's not how I would describe the scent in its totality. Don't get me wrong. So... That's not exactly what it's going to smell like. But if you frame it that way, I think you can smell it that way. Jared, thank you so much for the super chat. 
Yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Really appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat. Okay. So, rhubarb. I saw someone mention rhubarb earlier in the comments. Rhubarb is all up in this fragrance. And I think it is a beautiful and unusual addition to the scent. It's one of the things that really makes it stand out from the original, which I'll, I'll come back to that idea. It is an unusual type of almost bittersweet fruitiness, kind of sharp, but uplifting and bright in a way, and almost mouthwatering. When you first spray it, in fact, I'm going to give myself the opening. I'm going to do it on paper because I've actually been, this is like all I've been smelling for the past three days. I don't need it on my skin anymore for a little bit at least for another day or so. But yeah, that rhubarb is juicy. It's beautiful. <sighs> yeah. Very naturalistic, for sure. Very distinctive. So what I like the most, I'll start with the things I, I really enjoy about Elisimo Intense. What I like the most about this fragrance is that it is undeniably tied to its little... Well, to the original, so try to come up with something clever to the original. It's tied to this without doubt. However, at the same time, it's completely different. It's not like the Parfum version next to the Parfum Cologne version, where one is just a denser version of the other, or one is a lighter version of the other. This is a different personality. This is what a flanker should be, in my opinion, where you have the same identity the identity being the DNA of Elysium, but framed as a new personality that makes it really, truly stand out as something different and most importantly, not redundant. I know you've probably seen a lot of people saying that, oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's great that it's not redundant. It's great that it's pretty different. It is. It surprised me how different it is, but it's still at its core Elysium. Okay, I said don't expect a stronger version of the parfum cologne yeah because the parfum is already that so i know a lot of people have been asking this i've already seen a few comments is it stronger than the parfum cologne that seems to be the big question my answer to that question is yes but in my experience not by much but technically yes it is a little bit more intense as the name would suggest even from first spray if you saw my live first impressions on saturday when i first sprayed this i didn't even bring it up to my nose i sprayed it once on my hand and it started to diffuse immediately and robustly and it was filling the air and it really took me off guard uh it was like quite captivating and i find that apart from cologne you know it's noticeable when you spray it it's no slouch um but it it doesn't quite punch you in the same way. I think the rhubarb here, that robust fruitiness, really gives it a bigger face as it comes at you. That's a weird picture, but just, just roll with it. Okay. Let's keep going here. So, and st still speaking about performance, this hangs on my skin. I was getting about eight to 10 hours, but it starts to sit pretty close after about the first hour or two. I think a lot of people have the same experience with this fragrance. So for me, I had kind of the same vibe because I kind of get that vibe too. It does start to sit closer fairly quickly. After an hour or two, it was starting to emanate less far away from my body. Okay. Nonetheless, it does keep its core. And I'm going to say that a few times. And this is what I mean by that. The core of the scent, the personality of this fragrance, you know, even after the top notes have kind of dried off and ha will have evaporated. The core of the scent is still here. You can still get the full identity and personality of Elysimo Intense before even the heart starts to fade and the base notes are all you have left. That's when I feel like the core is gone. So it keeps its core for some time. But again, like the first five or six hours, it's not quite as punchy, but it still smells almost like the opening without the. Um, the intensity, right? But the scent of that is still very much the same. After about five to six hours, it turns 
into mostly dry vetiver on my skin. And that is actually typical for me. I need to stress that. There is vetiver in this. There's vetiver in the original too. And I remember when I started to get to know this fragrance years ago, I noticed, you know what? I'm getting a lot of vetiver on my skin as it dries. Every time I'd wear it, I'm like, oh, it dries into vetiver. I get vetiver. And that's how I got so accustomed to the scent of vetiver. Now, it took me a few years to realize that for whatever reason, my skin loves vetiver. If there's a, a, a hint of vetiver in a fragrance, it's coming out, it's popping out in some way on my skin. Sometimes I don't want that. Sometimes I don't want a vetiver bomb. I just, I want the complexity. I want the nuance. So I can almost guarantee that your experience is going to be a little different. Some of you might experience this too, but I think it's the few. On my skin, when this dries, vetiver is mostly what I get. And it's not unpleasant, but it's like, okay. But again, that's me. Your skin very well might be different. Okay. Now, I wore 10 sprays of this on day one, on Saturday, after I unboxed this. Grace and I went out to a winery. We met some friends. And then after that, I actually had a gig at another winery. So we were all out in wine country. It was 90 degrees Fahrenheit. It was a hot day. I put on 10 sprays of this. I sprayed twice behind each ear. I sprayed twice on the back of the neck. I had an open collar. I think I sprayed maybe once inside of each collar. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I put one spray on each elbow crook for 10 sprays. For the first four to five, wait, hold on. Okay, yeah, I was skipping ahead by accident. So it was like 93 degrees and I was picking up light wafts. We were just sitting out on a table under shade, thankfully, because it was so freaking hot. And I was like really trying to notice it. I was picking up light wafts, but mostly with the breeze. If there is no breeze, if the air was still, wasn't really smelling it. And I wasn't sitting here smelling my arm because we're in front of guests and I'm not going to be. Oh, anyway. So, yeah, how are your kids? You know, I'm not going to be doing that. That's just weird. OK. So by the time we got home at the end of that day, it was about seven hours later since I had first applied it. I could hardly smell it on my arm. It was it was here. That's mostly where I was doing my detection um, because I wasn't really getting wafts anymore. It was on my arm, but it was really slight. And it was mainly that vetiver dry down that I had talked about. Okay. Um, so what I gather from that is that the heat, because we were literally in the heat for like seven hours, either in the shade or not, the heat really evaporated this fragrance pretty quickly. And the heat is going to do that to any scent. Obviously, if it's a lighter concentration or if there's more diffusive or volatile ingredients, it will evaporate quicker. So under the sun with 10 sprays, it didn't disappear, but it basically became almost undetectable for me. Now, well, I'll, I'll get to the more, more in a second about that. Uh, let's see. So um, I wore it on Sunday really briefly. In fact, Sunday was a weird day because it was Mother's Day. We were hanging out with Grace's family and Grace's mother, I think I've mentioned before, is very much sensitive to fragrance and it's way more severe than it actually sounds. And I'm not going to go into it, but as a result, I don't wear any scent of any kind around her. So I put it on my skin um, just for a little bit, but I had to wash it off. So Sunday was kind of um, that was kind of a wash, quite literally. Uh, but yesterday, Monday, I gave this fragrance two full wearings. I wore it in the first part of the day, uh, 10 sprays yet again, and I had that on for like four or five hours for the first part of the day, kind of running around, doing some errands, and um, and then later on, um, I put on seven sprays for an indoor event that evening. Again, this was last night. Uh, Grace was actually loving the opening, and again, I love the opening too. If you saw my first impressions... I wasn't crazy about the opening because it simply wasn't what I was expecting. But the more I got to know it, the more I put it side by side with the original, the more I smelled it around me. I'm like, this is a really great opening. It's one of my favorite openings I've smelled in a new fragrance this year. Easy. Can easily say that. Grace was loving it. 
especially during that first you know four or five hour chunk i was detecting it a little bit more because we were outside less it was hot but we were a little bit more going through you know climate controlled environments i was picking it up a little bit more especially during that first hour or two so that is when i kind of learned that it keeps its core better when you're not just under the sun and again that's going to go for any fragrance it most fragrances will start to deteriorate because the sun is a it's a force to be reckoned with not to be reckoned with actually it doesn't care about your fragrances it will just destroy them <laughs> so unless you have something super heavy you can expect anything that is more on the fresher side of things to evaporate and there's nothing to be really um, upset about with that it's something to expect all right Grace Funky Frags approved. Yes, indeed. Sorry, I'm not really getting all your comments, guys. Let me go back a bit. Just trying to get through all my notes, and I'm almost done here. Um, we're getting to it. We're getting to it. And, you know, I can tell you what I think, but you might not feel the same way. Someone being disrespectful? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, we're almost done here. So, at the end of the second chunk of the day, so again... When I did seven sprays last night to go out to an event for the evening, wore a suit and everything, I feel like it worked for that. Very versatile fragrance. Um, the core scent was present after five hours of that. So we were only out for five hours. I got back home, you know, maybe around midnight and I could still smell it. The core was there, but very close to the skin once again. So overall, I can say that I struggle to smell this around me because it starts to sit close fairly quickly, all right? Now, I haven't truly oversprayed it. I keep seeing the word sissy sprayer popping up in the comments, which is, I don't, I have words which I will not express about that term, but I think 10 sprays is quite enough. If I told any person that I put on 10 sprays of a fragrance, they would think I was crazy. Um, so I thought 10 would be enough. Maybe you could do 15, maybe 20. I'm, I don't see myself personally doing that because I don't care that much. I don't absolutely need to be smelling it around me all the time. Okay. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Red flag, pizza face. Pizza face, just stick to eating pizza. All right. Um, where, where did I leave off here? Yeah, so I probably won't overspray this fragrance because I don't care that much. But you're welcome to do so. Maybe get a sample first and overspray it from that. See how it does for you. Um, again, it's not a weak fragrance, but it's not going to be beast mode, room filling, all the things, the weird things that a lot of people seem to want. Um, but you'll still smell it around you. Again, as long as you're not like sunbathing, you know. Um, let's see here. So for me, the most interesting part of the scent is the first five to six hours, that time when the core is still there. After that, again, become, for me, it becomes a little bit more familiar, a little bit less special. It's just that vetiver, again, just for me. It's clean, it's woody, it's dry, it's pleasant, but it's not special, but it is good quality. And like I said, your experience very well could be different in the deep dry down because my skin is weird. I have a vetiver video coming later this week, and I will talk more about vetiver's affinity for my skin and how weird it is. So last thing I'll say, I've seen some people mentioning and asking me, hey, I've seen people say this smells a little bit like aqua de jo in the dry down. Can you confirm? When I read that, and I had this fragrance on my skin and I smelled it and kind of looked for that. I definitely could see where people are coming from. Up close, I get that kind of subtle, you know, like fresh aquatic, but it's smooth feel, that cowlone feel that you might get. However, um, more vetiver, <laughs> a lot of vetiver in there, or at least on my skin. And it smells way less synthetic smelling than something like Aqua Di Jo, at least to my nose. So I would say yes and no to that comparison. So I know you guys want to know the final thing here. 
which one is better which one is better so i would say they're different they're quite different this one they're both versatile this one may be more versatile this one may be a little bit more crowd pleasing so to speak if that's what you care about however i think a lot of people would say you sacrifice performance with this for me it's not so bad but for most people it seems to be abysmal that's what i hear so i like this one more simply because it's more interesting it's maybe a little less versatile though still versatile however the profile and the constituents therein why am i speaking like this <laughs> like i'm like giving a state of the union address um the profile itself is more interesting like i said in my first impressions this is a little bit more niche if you will this is what you might expect from a fresh fragrance from a house like Raja Parfum I've seen some people say this is what they wish that this was and it is what it is I think this is great it's a great scent it's a bestseller for a reason it's super popular for a reason even though people hate the performance people still wear it people still talk about it and they will continue to do so for a reason but this is a step up for me. This is an upgrade. If you're asking me, I like it a lot. I do like it more than the original. Um, yeah, just a good scent. I'm glad I got to know it a little bit more. I wasn't planning on doing an update live stream after I did my first live stream, but I'm like, you know what? After I gave it that first full wearing on Saturday, I'm like, you know what? I should definitely follow up with my final thoughts. I, so I decided to spend the whole weekend with it, and I'm glad I did. Now, with all that being said, no, I cannot recommend blind buying a bottle of this. It's too expensive. And for those of you who are a performance junkie, because I know there's a lot of performance junkies out there, you might be mad at it because I don't find it to be the strongest thing ever. Again, like I said, I don't care, but I know a lot of you might care about that more than how good it smells. You want to be able to smell it all day long. And there's other fragrances that do that. This one is not one of them for me. So I can't sit here and lie and say, oh, yeah, it's super strong and it's going to last. And it may not. But again, your mileage may vary, as I always say. All right. So that's really it as far as an update i'm going to keep wearing it of course um let me know what you guys think are you guys planning on getting this fragrance at this point pizza face i hope you didn't take that too personally um <laughs> voyage edp yeah i have smelled that years ago i don't remember if it's still available um, but i do need to revisit that uh, I have tried a few fragrances from Boadicea, but it's been some time. Trendividual is unimpressed. He will not, most likely not be getting a bottle. Fractastico is getting both that and Isola Blue. Here's Isola Blue, which we talked about in that first live stream on Saturday. Um, I don't really have anything else to say about this. I haven't worn it, but I'm actually going to wear it today. Um, in fact, I'm going to put it on right now. Why not? Why not? So. Mm -hmm. Put on a good six sprays. I like my personal spray because when no one's looking, I like to get my nose in my shirt and get that warmed waft for myself. Yeah, that'll be good for now. This stuff is pretty dense, pretty thick. I don't need a whole lot of it. I think it can actually get a little bit too much in the heat when you spray too much because it's it's rich some heavy base notes can i wear this fragrance in june and july weather yes i would say that's the best time to wear it the hot weather is going to be great um the cold weather might be okay but i can guess that it's not going to be it's not the fragrance is not going to blossom and open up to its full self if it's not hot but warm is better than hot i would say for this fragrance it's it's fine with hot but as i said it kind of evaporated pretty quickly when it was hot but when it's warm like you know mid 70s maybe at the highest high um, low 80s 
might even be uh, better. So it's going to cool down here in the next few days. I will continue to wear this maybe at least one more time on a more moderate day. We'll see how it does so it doesn't just burn up under the sun. Really appreciate that, Jared. Yeah, if you want to go check out the first stream. Okay. <laughs> like Chris Brown. Wish I could dance like Chris Brown. Uh, it's pretty controlled, Peter. It is a pressurized atomizer for sure. All right. Well, you guys are awesome. Um, I see Daniel said he's going to wait to hit Lucky Scent. Have I ever thought about a second channel dedicated to clones? No, Andrew. <laughs> that will not be happening anytime soon. I am not the clone guy. If you're looking for clones, this is not your go-to channel for it. Nothing wrong with them, but they're just not really what I'm interested in. Top three hot weather scents from Raja Parfum. I would easily drop O Intense into there. Um, I would put maybe Burlington 1819 into there. And Isola Blue, yes. Um, again, not my top pick for the hottest days, but it's made for the heat. It will be just fine. Antoine said you bought it. Wow. Oh, yeah, Oceania. I can't forget. Oceania is wonderful. That's, in fact, maybe even more perfect than Isola Blue, if you're asking me for the hot weather. Oh, Elysium Owens or Burlington. That's tough. Um, honestly, those are different functions for me. Burlington is a little bit more of a classy, fresh scent, a little bit more complex smelling, and maybe a little bit less crowd pleasing, more polarizing. So it's more special to me. I would pick Burlington, but I still would wear this for other functions where I wouldn't wear Burlington. So it really comes down to whichever one you think you're going to wear more. If you want something more versatile, this is more versatile than Burlington. If you don't care, then get Burlington or better yet, sample them both. <laughs> yeah. Red man. I'm using my phone right now to actually do this live stream, but I use a DSLR, a Canon Rebel SL2 uh, for my videos. You should totally, but your phone is fine. Start with your phone if you got one. I, sh I assume you do. Garrick. Thank you so much, Garrick. That means a whole lot to me. Appreciate that. Summertime Oud. Yes, I actually do have a suggestion. Oud Tonic from The Gate is perfect for that. Oud Tonic from The Gate Paris or Gate Perfumes, whatever they call it. Check that one out. It's called Oud Tonic. Once again, thank you, Jared. Way more. Hit the <laughs> like. Yeah, guys. Appreciate you. Uh, you can always resell that for 400. I'm not sure exactly. I must have missed something. I apologize. Mancera lemon oud or oud lemon mint, I think is what you're talking about. That one is whew, that one could be a lot in the heat. It's very, very dense and it can get kind of powdery, but as long as you don't spray too much, it's good. But I think. Ooh, tonic is a little better for the heat than that. Hey, Mr. Copeland. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Luis from Monterey. I hear it's beautiful there. Mudar, have a good one. Um, What did you say? I know you love... We'll be here another few minutes or so. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and drop them in. And then I have to get going. Have I tried 100 Silent Ways? Yes, I have a sample of that somewhere. I like it. I think it's one that I prefer on Grace more than on myself, but I need to try it again because it's been a couple years. Is there a sweet sandalwood focus fragrance from Raja? Sweet sandalwood. I don't know if I've smelled something like that in particular with that sandalwood forward, but if you're looking for kind of a creamy, woody, sweeter fragrance, Danger 
is definitely that. Um, but it is marketed for men. So unless you don't want kind of an amber oriental, not amber, I meant to say amber fougere, pardon me. Um, amber, most people would call an oriental fougere. I prefer to call it an amber fougere. Um, unless you don't mind that, then it's worth checking out. But it may not be completely sandalwood forward. What have I tried from Argos? I've been talking about Argos on my channel for like three or four years now. Um, so if you go back, you will find a whole lot of Argos on my channel. Um, I've tried basically all of them except for their newest one, Nemean Lion. Okay, ready for... Yeah, I need to smell those X versions as well. Midsummer Dream for hot heat. Not my go-to for hot heat. For evenings in the summer, yes. But I think it's a little too powdery for the heat, at least for me. Let's see. Let's see who else. Oh, I know. I know where it comes from. <laughs> Favorite Bond? Bleecker Street. Easy. Favorite Dior? It changes from time to time. Right now, I think it's Savage Elixir, even though I'm not wearing that a whole lot because it's a little bit too much for the heat. But Savage Elixir is my favorite right now, at least as far as their mainstream releases. I don't have really any experience with their Privé line. So that is something I need to catch up on. Let's see. I have sm uh, smelled Ombre Nuit, which is beautiful. But I already have 40 knots from Zerzhov, which is similar. Vanilla Oud is indeed amazing. Really appreciate that. Thanks for watching, man. A good everyday man scent with lavender. Oh, there's a lot of those. Um, I mean, it really depends on your budget, honestly. Um, but I would say, you know, um, gosh, there's too many to choose from here. I mean, honestly, I think Elysium. This one has some good lavender in it, the Lysium O Intense. But again, it depends on your budget. Um, Sung, Alfred Sung Home is a great, cheap, but great uh, quality lavender fragrance. It's very soapy, maybe a little bit old school, but not too much. I'm a little bit too hungry to continue thinking about that. I apologize. My brain is not working. I need to get some food. Beau de jour. That's right. Any, uh, well, that may not be too everyday for everyone because that one's pretty, whew, that's very distinctive. But if you like distinctive fragrances, a oh, beautiful scent. And there's a lot of other great fougeres. Yes, yeah, Scandal has lavender, but again, not everyone's cup of tea. Um, Scandal is, again, yet again, pretty distinctive. I do have Manhattan. Um, it to me, it's way more. It's more floral, more creamy, less earthy tobacco than tobacco vanille. Nowhere near as intense as tobacco vanille. CPH, yes, it is. It is oligarch rebottled. It's and more specifically, oligarch parfum rebottled. They had to pull oligarch because of the crisis in the Ukraine and Russia. And out of solidarity for Ukraine, they pulled Oligarch and took some time to remarket it. And it has just come out, if you didn't know. What do I think about Club the Inuit Untold? I did a video on that that has a lot of views. And uh, I actually did my unboxing there. And I followed up on it several times. It's not a fragrance I can ultimately recommend these days because... Um, the price went way up after all the hype and the dry down is just not special enough for that price. Let's see here. EDH. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a little bit too much to summarize. I would advise after the stream is over, go back and rewatch my, uh, my description it's going to be a little bit too much for me to say all over again even in summary okay guys i'm going to call it here it's been about 45 minutes i think that's a good amount and that's longer than i'd planned to go so once again 
Well, actually, no, I'm not going to say any more about this. If you missed it, then go back and watch it. Um, I think I pretty succinctly and effectively shared my thoughts on Elysium O and Tense. So thank you all for watching. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being a part of the Fresh Squad. Please hit the like button on your way out if you don't mind. And I will see you in the next video. Y'all take care, be good, smell good, treat people well, and keep growing. Take care.